Hi, I'm Dr. Rodney Ford. I've just finished my clinic and today I've yet again been asked the question, do I need an endoscopy to diagnose celiac disease? This is a complicated issue because celiac disease many years ago, 50 years ago or more, was diagnosed on the basis of the appearance of the small bowel. You had to have an endoscopy to make the diagnosis of celiac disease. 50 years ago there were no blood tests. Everything was indirect and the only way to tell if the bowel was damaged was by having a look-see, taking a piece of tissue. This is the endoscopy. And this is the sort of thing that was looked for. You can see the top section shows normal villus, the middle one shows villus atrophy, and the bottom one shows a flat villus, that's extreme villus atrophy of celiac disease. This was the basis of the endoscopy, but over the last few years, last decade, there have been fantastic advances made in blood tests. Initially there was a test called the EMA, endomesial antibody, and then the TTG, tissue transglutaminase, and now another one called deamidated gliadin peptide. These tests are extremely sensitive and very good at picking up the evidence of gut damage. So much so that they can be positive before the gut damage can be seen by the microscope. So nowadays, to make a diagnosis of celiac disease, you really only need to have high tissue antibodies showing gut damage. But it is still traditional to do the endoscopies but it's not necessary. If you have the gene for celiac disease, if you have raised tissue antibodies to tissue damage, and you recover gluten-free, that's all you need. So the endoscopy is becoming an unnecessarily used tool. It's still used by tradition, but the new NAT scan definition of celiac disease makes the endoscopy not mandatory, but a useful adjunct. I've written a lot about this, and I've written the gluten syndrome, which takes you through that. And if you want to know a lot more about what tests, what they mean, and what you should do to make a diagnosis of celiac disease and gluten sensitivity, have a look at this book. I'd like to remind you that for every one celiac that's diagnosed, there are another 10 people who have got gluten syndrome or non-celiac gluten sensitivity, or gluten intolerance, we call it, or gluten sensitivity. Gluten affects at least one in 10 people. One in 100 people are affected by celiac disease that requires the test for tissue transglutaminase, the other tissue tests, or the endoscopy. The last thing to say is that people with gluten syndrome most have a normal biopsy. So if you have a normal small biopsy, it does not rule out a gluten problem. Thanks, I hope this helps. Subscribe to YouTube, Dr. Rodney Ford.